What's been going on in Teleco Village? Well, unless you happen to live in a soundproof house and never go outside, it's pretty obvious that something's different this year. And that's the emergence of the periodical cicada. We've asked Medhula Goresh of the University of Tennessee to join us to talk a little bit about the periodical cicada and what it means for this year. The brood that we are seeing is, uh, is a cicada from a 13-year life cycle, and it's called Brood 19. They live underground, actually, for the 13-year period, where they attach themselves to roots of trees and live off the tree sap. They continue to grow, and grow obviously very slowly, until that 13-year period arrives where they emerge from the ground. Nobody has ever been able to figure out how a cicada knows that the 13 years has elapsed. But when those 13 years has elapsed, the way they know that it's time to come out of the ground is when the soil temperature at five to eight inches in depth reaches a temperature of 64 degrees. That seems to be the trigger. After they come up, they shed their exoskeleton. And then they're going through the process of metamorphosis, much like a butterfly does. They grow wings, they split out of the exoskeletons that are left behind, and you see those shells all over the tree trunks in the village right now. And their wings dry. And all these process happens like in very few hours. When you see them, the first adult, they look like very pale colored, and after that they change to this like, like very, uh, orange or black looking adults. And they begin to fly and they begin to sing. Cicadas actually have an organ on both sides of their abdomen. It's the males that have these and they're called timbals. And they actually vibrate those organs and their abdomen acts as a sound chamber to create the sound. So when the male feels that, okay, this is a person I want to meet with, so that then she kind of like gives a, a, a signal, okay, then she kind of flicks her wings, and that is how then they get attracted, and that's how the whole process begins. And then the females proceed to lay eggs. And the way she does that is she actually has an organ at the base of her abdomen called an ovipositor. And it's very sharp, it's knife-like. And she'll make a slit into a small branch of the tree and lay eggs. She'll then move farther up the branch, make an additional slit and lay additional eggs until she's completed uh, the cycle where she's laid all the eggs that she has in her body. Those eggs will mature for a period of time and when they hatch, they hatch into, I've heard them described as ant-like. I've seen the nymphs before and to me the nymphs look like termites. So, so the nymphs, they fall down. I mean, they go back to the ground, probably to, to back to two to eight inches to reach the roots of the trees. People are concerned about damage to the plants. One thing people will notice is that in a couple of months, you'll be able to see around the village damage to the trees. The branch tips will begin to, to turn brown. You'll see lots of brown leaves so that the tops of the trees will just be potted or pocked with, with these dead branches. That's actually a result of the cicada activity, and I don't want people to be alarmed by that. It's a condition called flagging that's directly related to the females making the slits in those branch tips to lay their eggs. Many refer to it simply as nature's way of pruning trees. So. Unless you have a very young tree in your yard or a very small tree that they've really hit hard, there should be no long-term damage from that, and there's nothing to be concerned about. What are the impacts of the cicadas on local birds and wildlife? We've asked Linda Parker, president of the Teleco Village Naturalist Club, to talk a little bit about that. So when the cicadas emerge, it's just a huge influx of food for all the animals in the ecosystem. Some species, like birds and snakes, are particularly impacted with all the free food just right there in front of them. Even animals that you think of that not eating insects, such as squirrels and chipmunks who normally eat seeds and nuts, I mean, they'll even switch their diet to, to cicadas because they're just there and easy, easy to get, easy to grab. Poisoning bugs will kill baby birds. 
At this time of year, all your favorite songbirds have nests full of babies. Most songbirds, including bluebirds, chickadees, and cardinals, feed their babies insects. If you coat all the insects with insecticide, they'll get fed to the baby birds. What about our pets? Is there a, should we be concerned about the cicadas and the availability of them to our pets? Yeah, as you're walking your dog, you may, your dog may notice all the cicadas and want to eat them. And don't worry about it. It's not, they're not poisonous to your dogs. If your dog eats a few, it won't hurt them. Cicadas are very high in protein and low in fat and not poisonous at all. But if your dog does eat a lot of them, it could cause some digestive problems because the exoskeletons of the cicadas are so hard and coarse and very hard on your dog's stomach lining. Same thing is true for cats, although cats don't normally gorge on them like dogs would. I definitely encourage kids and uh, everyone like to just go and watch them and see how uh, phenomenal this is. It's, yeah. <laughs> When all is quiet, the cycle has begun all over again. The last time they visited, Teleco Village was a very different place. We've seen tremendous growth and development in our community. No doubt some of those emerging cicadas were thwarted by the disappearance of their favorite tree, which was replaced by a house, a driveway, or a road that didn't exist 13 years ago. The young of this year's brood will emerge in Teleco Village in 2037. What changes will have occurred here? Hope to see you then. Here's a gallery of other great cicada images from Teleco Village residents. Dogs are the ones who do, 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 eat that, eat that. You know, that's... Got one on me? Let him stay there. <laughs> oh!